I'm Mingxuan from Tsinghua University, and I will present our work on learning transferable features with deep adaptation networks. This is a joint work with Yue Jiaming and Mike Jordan. So to begin with, so our question is, why learning transferable features? So in many real applications, supervised learning may fail when limited supervision is available for a target task of interest. So in such a scenario, we are having strong incentive to transfer learners that can generalize supervised knowledge from the source, related source task to the target task. And this paradigm is known as domain adaptation, or more generally, transfer learning. And as data distributions may vary substantially between the source task and the target task, increasing the transferability of features uh, by making the majority of the feature invariance to different distributions plays the key role to enable transfer learning and domain adaptation. And now with the common revolution of deep learning, deep neural networks are shown to able to learn more transferable features that generalize better for domain adaptation and produce breakthrough results on many data sets. And deep neural networks disentangle exploratory factors of variations across different tasks and compositionally group features by their relatedness to the invariant factors and boost the transferability. Deep neural networks can even transfer knowledge from some unrelated big data sets, although in such a case, we may only transfer the feature knowledge, but not the categorical knowledge. So, why deep, while deep neural networks are so powerful for learning transferable features, one critical question is how transferable are deep features? Yosinski and Benjo in the NIPS 2014 paper experimentally quantifies the general, generality and specificity of deep, neuro, deep neurons in each layer of the deep convolutional neural network and reports a few inspiring results. First, the deep features must eventually transition from general to specific along the network. And through specialization of higher layers fitted better to the original task, we are at the expense of performance degradation on the target task. And second, the feature transferability may further decrease significantly in higher layers if the task discrepancy increases. And another curious phenomenon also discovered by Galarit and Benjo in the ISML 2011 paper says that uh, disentangling variations in higher layers of the deep neural networks may further enlarge the cross-task discrepancy because different tasks are more mutually dis distinguishable with their highly uh, invariant features. So, our work inspired by the above understandings about the transferability of features and motivated by the learning theory of domain adaptation. To address the aforementioned issues, we propose a deep adaptation architecture, as shown in this figure, or we call it DAN for short, which generalized the deep convolutional neural network to domain adaptation. We start with the AlexNet architecture, the seminal architecture by uh, Krajewski and Hinton in 2012. Our key observations are threefold, motivated by Yosinski et al.'s finding. The first is that the feature extracted by the first, second, and third convolutional layers are general. Hence, these layers are kept fixed if labeled data is particularly small or fine-tuned if a reasonable amount of label data is available. Second, the features extracted by the fourth and fifth convolutional layers are less transferable, and these layers should be fine-tuned. Finally, all the fully connected layers are tailored to spe fit specific tasks. Hence, they are not very safely transferable, and the data set shift underlying these layers should be calibrated by matching cross-task distributions. And the main problems we, we approach in this work is to increase the transferability. And because the second layers are tailored to, the higher layers are tailored to specific tasks which are not safely transferable. And third, 
Similar to the very vanishing effect of supervision along the network, the calibration effect also vanishes in the backpropagation training of the deep networks. If we don't uh, show the domain calibration efforts to the hidden layers. And so to address these main problems, we formulate the objective function as here by introducing two improvements. The first improvement is the idea of deep adaptation, which performs direct adaptation to multiple task specific la hidden layers, including uh, the seventh, the sixth, and the output layer that corresponds to the classifier. And the second, we try to maximize the two sample matching power by an optimal combination of multiple kernels. As equation one shows, we add a multi-layer adaptation regularizer to the convolution net cost function, which requires the distributions of the source and target to become similar under the representations of all the fully connected task specific layers. And where function D is the discrepancy measure between the distributions, we will introduce in more detail here. We use the uh, discrepancy measure known as MKMND, the max multi kernel maximum mean discrepancy. It is a well known statistic for the two sample testing uh, literature, where acceptance or rejection decisions are made for null hypothesis of P equals to Q or not. Multi kernel MND is defined as the distance between kernel embeddings of distributions P and Q in the reproducing kernel Hilbert space, as equation two shows. The characteristic kernel, kernel K, is a convex combination of AM kernels, as equation three shows. And the characteristic property is crucial to enable that the kernel embedding of distributions is bijective, identifiable. There are many important properties of MND. The first is that if P equals to Q, if and only if MND approaches zero. And the, and the second is that by maximizing the standardized MND, that is the MND divided by the estimation variance, the uh, sigma, we can minimize the type two, type two error of a hypothesis test. The type two error says that MND will vanish to zero even when P and Q are different, and this is undesirable. This shows that choosing an optimal kernel for the two sample matching is, is also important to uh, distribution matching. Now we will show how to optimize the proposed model in linear time. We adopt the statistically unbiased estimate of MND, which is linear sum of quadruple functions GK. More specifically, a quarter tuple Z consists of four sequential data points from the shuffled data set. We, that is to say that we randomize the input and sequentially select four consecutive points, two from the source and the two, another two from the targets to form the quarter tuple. Then the quarter tuple function GK are evaluated using the multi-kernel function K. This unbiased estimate computes the MND using only linear time, and traditional method usually evaluate this MND using square time. When we train deep neural network by mini-batch SGD, we only consider the gradient of objective to the quarter tuple, as equation four shows. Now comes to learning the kernel. We learn the optimal kernel parameter beta for multi-kernel by maximizing their testing power, which is equivalent to minimizing the type two error. This leads to the convex uh, optimization problem as the equation five shows, where sigma is the estimation variance and matrix Q is the covariance matrix. The multiple kernel learning problem can be reduced to the quadratic program as equation six shows, which scales linearly to the sample size. We adopt an alternating optimization that updates uh, convolution net parameter theta by mini batch SGD and the kernel parameter beta by quadratic program iteratively. Now, we br our br brief analysis shows that the target task risk can be bounded by the source risk plus the maximum mean discrepancy. 
which is used as a proxy of the age divergence studied by Ben David uh, uh, in the uh, learning theory for domain adaptation. Our important inspiration of using non-parametric two-sample classifier such the MKMND in, used in this work is that uh, such a non-parametric uh, classifier can directly approximate the age divergence and directly relates to the uh, learning bound for domain adaptation. While by using parametric two-sample classifier as the previous talk shows, uh, one has to perform adversarial training to achieve the superimum of their classification error in order to approximate the age divergence, which reduces to maximizing the errors of discrim discriminating two tasks. And this may introduce optimization, optimization difficulties in learning competitive objectives. And now comes, we show some experiments. We perform evaluation on both unsupervised adaptation and semi-supervised adaptation where the target has a very limited label data. We elaborate evaluation to show the efficacy of both deep adaptation of multiple layers and optimal calibration using optimal kernels. We use the office data sets just as the pre previous presentation details. And our tasks are constructed using the four domains and all the configurations, which has 12 adaptation tasks. So by evaluating all the possible configurations, we are targeting an un un unbiased look at a data set bias. Because in some data set, you may achieve a better performance, but when you uh, train, uh, reverse the data set, make the performance may drop. We also study the, some variants of our approach. The first variant is using only a one hidden layer for adaptation, uh, either using layer seven or layer eight for adaptation. We turned them D, DEN seven and DEN eight. The second variants are using single kernel MND for adaptation. We turned that DEN SK. And we perform cross-validation and validation set by accessing validation errors of source classifier and two sample classifier. Uh, this uh, strategy is motivated uh, by the previous talk. And to achieve a fair performance comparison and a clear look at the performance game, we only adopt the default learning rate strategy in CAFE without a fancy uh, learning rate annealing tricks. That is to say we don't use any learning rate tricks. We just use the very simple one. The proposed DEM model uh, has significantly, significantly outperforms comparison methods on the difficult adaptation task. For example, uh, domain A to domain W, where the source and target are dissimilar, and achieves comparable performance on easy tasks. For example, D to W and W to D are very easy task where the source and target are very similar. And this shows that DN features are um, more transferable. We also observe two important observations. First, by comparing them against the single layer methods, DDC, DAN7, and DN8, we find that deep adaptation of multiple layers outperforms shallow adaptation of only one very hard to uh, uh, track layer. Um, our experiment shows that it is very difficult to decide which layer to, to adapt, layer seven, layer six, or layer eight. So a simple way is to just to adapt all the uh, specific layers. And uh, we also find that by using optimal kernels, we can match their uh, distributions much better. By comparing semi-supervised adaptation with unsupervised ad adaptation, we further find the following interesting uh, observations. Uh, training with limited target supervision is prone to overfitting and the results will be very bad. And the source supervision can provide strong but inaccurate inductive bias. Uh, with soft, but with the soft super supervision, we can fine tune the deeper model better. With the soft supervision, 
even very limited target supervision can facilitate a very significant performance boost. This shows that the most promising paradigm of domain adaptation is uh, semi-supervised learning, but we use the uh, source domain as a very strong inductive bias to uh, combat the overfitting problem. The two sample matching is more effective for bridging the similar task, the task A to W, and still there is room for improvements for the similar task. To intuitively demonstrate the transferability of features, we visualize the TSNE embeddings of uh, CNN features and DDC features and, our, uh, and DAN features. We see that with the DAN features, the target points are more discriminative and the categories are aligned better across domains, which implies that target points can be better discriminated using the DAN classifier. Finally, we show how generalization performance relates to two-sample discrepancy. We use the A distance as the uh, two-sample discrepancy, which reflects the generalization error of the two-sample classifier trained on the binary pro problem to distinguish samples between the source and the target. It is the uh, domain uh, classifier in the previous talk. The results reveal a very surprising observa observation that the A distance on both CNN features and DAN features are larger than the A distance on raw features. This implies that uh, using abstract deep representations, uh, such representations can be discriminative both for uh, classifying the categories and classifying the source domain from the target domain. However, uh, such enlarged task uh, dis discrepancy may deteriorate domain adaptation as implied by the domain adaptation theory. So it is very desirable that the A distance on DAN features is smaller than the A distance on DDC features. Oh, okay. To summarize, in this work we propose a, a, a network for learning transferable features. We introduced two improvements over CNN, that is, the deep adaptation of multiple layers and the optimal adaptation using multiple uh, kernels. Throughout this work, we have identified several interesting open problems. First, we need a principal way of deciding a boundary uh, between the generality and specificity, especially when the network is going deeper and deeper. As the Google Nets, it is more difficult to decide which layer to adapt. Second, we may perform deeper adaptation by matching the convolutional layers. Finally, we find that kernel embedding of distributions is still not powerful enough for adaptation, especially when the task dis distributions exhibit more complex structures. For example, we have a shift in the class conditional distributions and different categories cannot be aligned uh, between different domains. And it is very important to study fine-grained adaptation via structural embeddings of distributions. And thank you for your time. I'm taking pleasure for your questions.